the service. It's a joy to be here together as one community of faith this morning. A couple of announcements uh, this morning. Oh, right after, uh, right after the conclusion of, of the worship this morning, um, in the breezeway, which is uh, this uh, entrance out here to the left where the overhang is, you may have noticed that there was a coffee table set up. It's going to be some refreshments uh, out there after worship. So please join us, hang out for a little bit, enjoy some fellowship time with each other. We will have Bible study here in the sanctuary afterwards as too. For those of us who are going through the book of Revelation, we'll just hang out a little bit, grab some cookies and some coffee, and we'll have Bible study after worship as well here in the sanctuary. Something really exciting starts next Sunday. No, I'm not going on a coffee fast. That would be very sad. Um, next Sunday starts Children's Church. Again, Children's Church. Uh, the first and the third Sundays of the month, right after the children's message, our kids, elementary school, uh, kids will go to their own uh, church service over in the fellowship hall, uh, led by Miss Jen Beard. That's going to be a great experience for them. Uh, so I want to invite you to more information this week coming out from the church and the school office on that. But that gets uh, uh, relaunched uh, here next uh, next Sunday. Also, we certainly could use your help uh, with ushering. Ushering. If uh, adults or children, uh, it doesn't matter your age, as long as you can, kind of do this. Watch, this is really cool. Ready? <laughs> See? That's what you have to do. Right? So, uh, we want to, uh, uh, as a part of uh, enhancing our worship, the church's gospel, and this is serving one another. And our community at large, of course, serving one another is ushering. So if you're interested in maybe being an usher, you can do what I just did. Uh, please see uh, myself or any of our elders or Ms. Hines, and uh, we'll talk to you more about that. But then again, usher teams to help serve in our services going forward. Our students are going to serve in that capacity here today for us. So if you're wondering, now, I wonder what an usher does. I can do this. But I wonder what an usher does. We'll find our students. They're going to school you today. Maybe that may be something you might be open to. This, uh, this past Thursday, you uh, probably received uh, the announcement uh, regarding uh, Principal Gavin. Uh, this is certainly a, a sad time for our community as we all love uh, Mr. Gavin very much. And the service that he has uh, poured his heart and his soul into our school here. Unfortunately, his, his health is just not, just not working right now. And so, uh, in support of him and his family, Principal Gabbard has uh, decided that it's best not to, not to return for the next school year. You know that. Uh, and so there's going to be more announcements uh, about uh, the, the future coming. But know this, uh, we, we have a, a search committee. We've got names. We're working through candidates. We've got a plan in place see who the Lord would provide the first Luther in the next chapter. And so while God is working in great ways here, we're also going to ask you to, to pray for Principal Gabbard and his wife Vicki. We're certainly going to celebrate them and there'll be information about that coming out uh, in a couple of months so we can honor Principal Gabbard in his service here. But no, God's got this. One of the things that Principal Gabbard always says is God's in control. And God is in control. He's already working in, in mighty ways here, providing for our needs. It's important to even know him. So continue to be in prayer for him as we look forward to see the future that God has for us. Uh, in regards to that, uh, one more brief announcement, but thankfully it's not from me. Doug Clark is uh, the uh, congregational president. Uh, for those of you who don't know that title, it just basically means that he's the guy that's kind of in charge. He doesn't have his power tie on, though, so. Yeah, there you go. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I just wanted to announce today, uh, uh, make you aware of a special worship service that we will have uh, on February 25th, the fourth Sunday in February. That service will be at 10.30 instead of the 9.30 service, and that is going to be a celebration 
uh, of the installation of Pastor Andrew as our sole pastor. So on Sunday, February 25th at 1030, uh, we'll have that celebration service. Uh, president Rocky, the president of the uh, uh, Florida, Georgia, Lutheran District will be here and help officiate that service. Uh, Pastor O'Brien is going to talk with him and, and he's going to be here. So that's going to be a, a great uh, celebration for Pastor Andrew. So February 25th at 1030, they'll get a luncheon following the celebration uh, and fellowship after, after the service. So uh, welcome and let's look forward to February 25th. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Clark. So, uh, so this morning, let's stand, let's greet each other in the peace and the love of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then we'll remain standing for our Heavenly Father, we, we have sinned against 
the third chapter. Moses said to God, If I come to the people of Israel to say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, What is my name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, Say this to the people of Israel, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Say this to the people of Israel, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and thus I am to be remembered throughout all generations. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We rise in honor of our Lord the proclamation of the Holy God. Our gospel lesson for us comes this morning from the gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. And they went into Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath, he entered the synagogue and was teaching. And they were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one who had authority, not as the scribes. And immediately there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? And you come to destroy us. I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying out with a loud voice, came out of him. And they were all amazed, so that they questioned amongst themselves, saying, What is this, a new teaching of authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey. And at once his fame spread everywhere throughout all the surrounding regions of Galilee. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. This morning I want to ask you a question. See if you can answer it. Alright? It's simple. Ish. <laughs> Because how do you answer this question uh, sets, if you will, the pattern uh, for your life, uh, your beliefs, your actions, and your choices? Answer this one simple question, and all of those inner fightings and turmoils within yourselves will be put to rest. Answer this one little question, and the path before you comes into a laser focus. Are you ready? Here's the question. Who am I? It's a hard question, isn't it? Today, we have all sorts of answers to this question. We find our identity, because after all, that's what the question is. Who am I is a, is a question of identity. So, it's sought to be answered. We use cultural heritage. Political power, vocational work, some social cause, or even sexual orientation to, to determine the question, who am I? We search the ends of the earth seeking an answer to this thing that perplexes us. We craft our own personal identity, yes, unique and special, but it's crafted from the yearnings of our heart, from inside of us. Seeking to answer that question, who am I? Uh, so there's a fatal flaw to how we proceed to answer this question. A, a, glint, a glitch in the system, if you will, to uh, take a phrase from the matrix. We assume that looking inside of ourselves, we will find our true identity. We turn inside, looking to our hearts, our, our mind. The question still remains. Disney was not the most truthful when they said, follow your heart. Who am I? Who created us? Who breathed breath into our lungs? Who gave us the very hearts and minds that we can search for our identity? 
the author and the creator of life, crafted us before we were even born, making us, as Scripture tells us, fearfully and wonderfully. And he already knows the answer to the question, who am I? Because he created you and formed you. The creator of heaven and earth gives answer to every question of identity. Consider our, our Old Testament text today from Exodus 3 and then the theme of National Lutheran Schools Week, the I Am's of Jesus. Now, slightly before we picked up in our reading with uh, verse 13, what, what's happening here is that Moses is out in the desert. Things haven't really gone as planned for him in Egypt. And he's out in the desert and he has an encounter with his creator in a burning bush. God comes to him and lays out an impossible, seemingly impossible path before Moses. God told him that there was this insane road that he was going to go down, that he was going to stand before the Pharaoh of Egypt, the most powerful person in the world at that time, and say, hey, by the way, let my people go. You see, they had been enslaved in Egypt. Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the children out of Egypt? Moses asked. You see, in a moment of doubt and uncertainty, this simple shepherd was overcome by an outside identity that came upon him and, and that recreated who he was according to the voice of God. He, he thought he knew who he was before this encounter with the Lord. But afterwards, he found out who he, who Moses, he was really. Who am I? Creator of life and breath. The creator of Moses. The one who formed Moses in his mother's womb. The one who had carried Moses through his entire life, although he hadn't realized it. When confronted there with the question of his identity, God does not wait. For Moses to look into himself to try to figure things out. He doesn't wait for Moses to ponder this and, and, and search his feelings and his heart and his mind and say, well, I think I'm this. No, God tells Moses who he is. And even better, to the question that Moses was wondering, who am I? God responds to Moses, I am. Weird. Right? doesn't make much sense to us in English. We don't talk that way. To understand this, we actually have to get into the Hebrew, into how you know, the language of the, of the Old Testament when it was originally written. In, in essence, what's happening here, when, when Moses said, when God reveals himself to Moses, says, I am, he's using a verb. A verb that encapsulates all of past, present, and future time. He's identifying himself as the God of all eternity that just expanded Moses' reality infinitely for him. When God reveals his own name, I am, it is a present picture of who God is, but also who God always was and who God always will be. The one who knows Moses better than himself comes to him. And this personal God this personal God who formed Moses also did great and mighty things like part the seas and flood the earth. But in that flood, he saved God's own people, his children, in the ark. This is the God of action, a God of love, the God who knows us. So Moses asked, Who am I? Expecting to find the answer within himself. God comes to Moses and says, I am. To the one who said, let there be light, and it was so. God speaks a new identity to Moses. You see, to me, to you, to us here today, God's answer for us and our identity is the same as it was to Moses. The creator of life and breath does 
not waiting for us to search endlessly and struggle trying to find the, the answer to the question of who am I to, to discover our own true identity by following a hard oh no, that leads nowhere. He knows it. The Almighty God does not need us to search our hearts to understand who we really are. Because God has sent His Son to identify with us and then to give us a new identity of who we really are. You see, God sent His only Son into the drowning world that was flooded with sin, darkness, and despair to call us out of it into the ark of His church. And through our baptism, God, through His Son, Jesus, gives you a new identity, a true identity. To our broken identity that is bent inward upon ourselves, struggling over the same issues, problems, and complexes, God lifts us up out of those transforming waters and says, you are my child, you are a new person, your identity is in me. Jesus walking with us on earth, crucified as a result of our sin, but risen to a new life, reconciled himself and us to our creator. Our identity is outside of ourselves, but yet is a part of us who comes to us. Jesus tells us who we really are. Jesus with us, drowned in baptismal crucifixion and risen to new life at the flood. The great I am, Jesus with us, present in body and blood for the forgiveness of sins and the strengthening of our faith and holy communion. Jesus with us, flooding our ears with undeserved mercy and holy absolution. The great I am is with me. The very same God who spoke his identity to Moses, who called Moses as his own. The same God who speaks his identity to you. Baptized child of God, this is who you are. You are connected to Christ. Free from death and the devil on the account of what Jesus has done for you. A hidden saint on earth reconciled now to your creator. We are free from the struggles of the question of who I am because we know the great I am has called us his own. We are free from the question of struggling of finding our identity. Why? Because the old self was drowned in baptism. And the new identity that God gives us. Identity that is his own son. It's placed upon our hearts. In our minds. No matter how you feel, no matter what you're struggling with, no matter what question you may have about yourself or about God, know this. The true identity of your Creator is the one who loved you and came to earth for you. And just like He did for Moses, the great I Am has already declared Himself for you in Jesus Christ. For His sake. Peace of God that passes all understanding, guarding through your hearts and minds. In Christ Jesus, our Lord.
that we share together the words of the Apostles' Creed. I invite you to stand. People of God, I believe in God.
year we look forward to National Lutheran Schools Week and the opportunity it brings to celebrate with over 2,500 schools worldwide who share the life-changing message of Jesus Christ with more than 180,000 students, families, and communities they serve. Churches and schools rejoice in the partnership of raising up the next generation of faithful Christian disciples, experiencing and celebrating God's lavish gifts of love, grace, and mercy, sharing those gifts with others, and being transformed by God's word. Throughout National School, National Lutheran Schools Week, Lutheran Schools organize various activities and events, such as chapel services, prayer gatherings, community service projects, and special programs. These celebrations provide an opportunity for Lutheran schools to come together. They promote the important role of Lutheran schools in the United States and around the world and celebrate our Lutheran mission to God, which guide our Lutheran schools as they serve students and families. Our school's theme this year begins in Exodus when God appeared to Moses in the burning bush and identified himself as I am. In Exodus 3.14, God said to Moses, I am who I am. And you said, say this to the people of Israel, I am I said it to you.
recently was called into her eternal home. So we, we pray for her family and her friends, that the Lord will bring them comfort and peace. As Donna has received her, her crown of right, her, her thought, crown of life and her robe of righteousness. Let us pray at this point. We pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all according to their needs. O oh, Father, O oh, Lord, you rescued your fallen people with the sufferings and death of Christ, your Son, our brother of the flesh. Guide us to know and rejoice in salvation. And to proclaim this gospel of boldness to our brothers and sisters. Father of mercy, your compassion has rescued us from the power of evil and set us free. Guide us to use this liberty to serve others and Christ to serve us. Father of grace, you have provided us with new life and holy baptism and granted us faith by the power of the Spirit. Keep us in this faith that we may be preserved from evil and delivered from all our enemies to everlasting life. Father of truth, you have given us your word that we might know the truth. Provide for us good and honest leaders who will be the voice of your word. And protect us from violence, so that we may be peaceful and godly lives without fear. Father of comfort, you have borne in your Son all of our wounds. Grant your continued presence and healing according to your will, especially as you have before you Sue Heller as she recovers from surgery, and the family and friends of Donna Bass. And you have granted Donna eternal life for your Son Jesus. Comfort her family and her friends. Remind them of the cross and of the empty tomb. And you promise that you are the resurrection and the life. Grant patience in all trials, peace and afflictions, and hope in your promises both now and eternally. Use our words and actions to be a blessing to others. Father of hope, you have ended the reign of death by the resurrection of your Son. Deliver us from death. And grant your peace and your comfort to those who grieve. Father of courage, you have promised to grant us all things needful for this body and life, even as you have provided eternal life to us in Christ. Help us always to pray with confidence in your mercy, knowing that your answer is our heart eternal good. Grant to us all things needful and keep us from all things harmful, O Lord. For we trust in your goodness and in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. With certainty in the promises of Jesus and his salvation, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Serve the Lord. Be alive to the world. Thank you.